So the time has come to tell you the name of the man, the pastor, who I have been exposing in my Why I Left a Word of Faith Church series. He is now part of the Demon Slayers. I am talking about Brian Ayala. to group to group because you got a wild donkey spirit you a wild ass is what the bible says a wild donkey spirit okay and donkey is ass that's what a donkey is you gotta settle your butt down somewhere and grow serve you grow with this and i love my leaders I'm i love the people in my church but i got people coming from other ministries and you want to you you're trying to bad mouth other pastors Running their name in the dirt with me. Let me tell you, I know who's flake and fake up in this city. I'm not stupid, right? But some of you are looking for a position. And the minute you don't get your way, you're out. Bam! You're like a little bunny, bunny jumping, 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 jumping. Let me get in this video. Let me get in this group. Let me go over here. Let me go over there. You know what the bottom line is? You got ants in your underwear because you ain't, you a wild ass. You a donkey. You don't know how to submit. Okay. Go ahead and pause it right there, my brother. So <clears throat> again, we want you viewers to keep in mind, uh, this is a pastor. Uh, this is a pastor. Please understand it's not something we do every service. You're not going to hear this every single service. You're not going to hear about money every service. And I'm preaching better than y'all are shouting right now. Guess what? Pastor Ayala is going to roar more than he ever did before. If you don't like it, delete me. I'm telling you straight up, we're not raising up a bunch of cowards and a bunch of sissies and a bunch of pansies. We're going to raise our voice together. We're raising up a remnant that knows what true obedience is, that knows what true unity is. None of this. They didn't let me do this. The reason you didn't do it because you're not called to do it. That's why. The problems you're going through because the minute you get on the ladder, people are going to see you. And the higher you go, the more and could be all in hopes that you will see what a difference you actually. Oh, really? <laughs> Pastor Brian, you ought to just be a little bit nicer in your delivery. Is this nice enough for you? Huh? Kitchy, kitchy, kill, come here. Come here, little, little bubby. Is this nice enough for delivery for you? Wait a minute. That's right. I deliver the message because of how you want it. Hey, y'all. This is Christian Storm. Thanks for tuning in to would you run in times bible channel bd boop and um it's been a long time coming i admit i've had some fear um building i wanted to pray when it was the right time to talk about brian ayala but i had some fear and the fear was backlash um however i know that that's gonna come with any false teacher that you expose um, the difference with this one is that I actually attended his church between uh, 2007 and 2009. And this is the man who I've actually been exposing on my series, Why I Left a Word of a Church. So if you wonder who it was, it's actually him. Um, the funny thing is, is it flew through my feed from um, a channel... A biblical channel of revealing truth who is led by Sean and I appreciate that man very much he does exactly as God's Word says to do regardless of the backlash I just waited and I knew okay it's time to say something he did his channel um, exposing the demon slayers this group is called the Warriors of Deliverance and claims to be the biggest revival in South Texas if we go to their main page, we see that it's the fourth time they've done this event. 
And what is this all about? They say that Warriors of Deliverance is a conference focused on setting the captives free. But this is a lie from the pit of hell. Nobody gets free in this crowd. Even if you're a born again, spirit filled believer, these people teach that you can never be completely free from having demons in you. They cast demons out of the same people over and over. There's Brian Ayala who's apparently a pastor of pastors, a modern day John the Baptist. I don't think so. Not if he's partnering up with these false teachers. And over the years, maybe about a handful of times, I kind of checked up and saw what Brian Ayala was up to. Um, I am hesitant ever to call him a pastor. I don't see him as a pastor. I actually see him as a disqualified pastor because of the things that I saw, the things that he did. Um, especially the mishandling of money, um, also his worldliness, his behavior was completely um, just against what God's word would say of a godly pastor. And why I completely I want to expose Brian and the reason also I'm going to give Ephesians 5 11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them reprove means to rebuke them or uh, expose expose them and um, that's exactly what I do off and on on this channel along with um, end times discussions are we living toward the end times? We're getting extremely close. And as we're getting closer, I see more and more false teachers, false preachers, false prophets. Brian is a false teacher. He is also a false prophet. I saw a great deal of him mishandling the money. And don't take uh, a side to his wife, Kia, because I saw some deceptive things going on with her as well. One thing that I noticed with this, you know, Brian is a word of faith teacher. Um, he is underneath his uh, mentor and who he calls his spiritual father, Rod Parsley. He's copied him from the very beginning, um, not from the beginning of him being saved. One thing about Brian is we've known him well. My brother actually was with him when he first started services on his driveway. And when the driveway got too full, he simply got a building which he rented every single month. Now, anybody can start a church, anybody. But we're talking about a novice, and that's one thing that according to scripture, you're not supposed to be in leadership, let alone a pastor, as a novice. And this was what he did. And that cued in me and my mom started going to his church. And um, everything seemed to be biblically accurate at that time, but I did hear about him uh, giving testimony of people that were giving money in the thousands, reaping in the ten thousands, and he started getting that from Rod Parsley. And um, they take that scripture about sowing a seed completely to mean money. This is not money at all. But Word of Faith pastors state all the time that this scripture actually means money. It does not. Money does not mean anything to the Lord. But saving souls to his kingdom, that means everything. Everything to the Lord. Brian is one that goes and flocks to money. That's when he started uh, with Parsley a great deal. He calls him his spiritual father. Now, according to scripture, y'all correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, because according to being a spiritual father, you would have had to save these people. When Paul, the apostle Paul, said he had spiritual children and they, you know, he was the spiritual father, he saved those people um, through the gospel. This didn't happen with Brian and Parsley. Parsley, he he had already he was already saved before he started going with Rod Parsley. 
but the money thing was just started being constant. When I say constant, I mean this was constant. And I knew this was something that he believed in before I started going to the church. My brother let me in on that. And actually, I thought it was a false teaching. And my brother said, no, no, it works. So I was like, oh, well, I guess then I'm wrong. I should just go and check out the church. So later I was on the worship team and um, money became something that was completely prevalent. It was all the time, giving, giving, not just your tithing, but an offering as well. And guys, I'm going to let you know, tithing is not biblical in the New Testament. Um, they like to use that scripture with Abraham giving the 10%. Let's go there real quick. They forget that scripture that says at the end, according to the law. Guys, a tithing, if you read the Old Testament, was for Israel. And the 10% was actually given to the Levitical priesthood, by the way. And also, um, it is not biblical for today. We are under not the Old Covenant, but the New Covenant. But even then... We're actually the old covenant with uh, giving tithing was to Israel. It wasn't for us. So if pastors would actually preach the word of God and say what tithing really is. And actually it's so funny because when I watch clips of false teachers, they actually admit it's not just the old covenant. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Old covenant. It is for the old covenant. But Jesus said it too, which he did not talk about giving 10% to the church. That's false. If anybody tells you otherwise, they're preaching false. And Brian taught tithing. He taught offering. There was a lot of guilt trips going on with offering. But one thing that I did not understand with offering, um, there was a lot with giving to the church uh, land. We were going to buy land that was next to a a funeral home and there was a down payment put on that and so every single month Brian was going to give money to uh, the owner so that we can build a church. So thousands and thousands of dollars was going in. People were pledging and the thing about the funny thing, if you did not have money to pledge um, you need to pray to God so God would give you that money so it would go straight to the charge. And this is some things that I did not understand, even with pledging in general before the whole land issue came in. If you didn't have a seed to sow, because Brian teaches, sow a seed for your need. If you need something, sow a seed. The devil hates uh, you giving your tidings and offering. But I want to encourage you today, as many people they feel led to, I want you to give the most generous offering you can give today. If you're giving your tithe and your offering, thank you and God bless you. But for some of you that you know God has been good to you, you got a bonus. Some of you got, I don't know, maybe somebody blessed you with an inheritance somewhere. We ain't telling you to give your inheritance. Come on, somebody. But you know what? A little part of that, whatever you feel led to sow. And the one lemon tree, it's a real story, a true story. He planted the first fruit. He gave it to God from that lemon tree that he planted and from one another he didn't do that they both were the same type of fruit but there was a different type of seed there was the same type of fruit but a different type of seed you don't hear what I'm saying the fruit was the same but what made the seed different was the person who chose to give it to God versus the person who did it. A seed cannot grow unless it is planted. When he gave the first fruit to God, that lemon 
grew five times larger than any of the other lemon trees he had. You want to know why? Because God is not a man that he should lie. When you get to God, what belongs to God. I don't care who don't like you. I don't care if your boss wants to fire you. When you give faithfully, God has to bless you because you are exercising faith. Come on and give him praise. I'm not saying names. Not too long ago, somebody gave an amount. And I'm not saying names because I find out that when you say names, people start calling you up asking you for money. It's a true story. Not only two weeks later, probably a little, yeah, about two weeks later, no, October, no, actually about a month, a little over a month. I'm going to just say it. He sold $10,000. Within a matter of two months, two months, he received a harvest of $22,000. I get it. It's not your $22,000. But I'm going to let you know something. When you stop letting the devil make you greedy in your mind, and you stop letting the devil tell you, oh, God, don't do this and God, don't do that. If you needed healing in your body because of a sickness, I promise you, you'd believe in healing. If you ever got cancer, I promise you, you'd be the first one at the altar asking for prayer. So we believe God for everything else. But why is it so hard to believe God when you're giving? Because the love of money. Money ain't the root, but love is. The love of money is the root to all evil. But when you love God. You'll never love money. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm a giver by heart, by, by just, just, I learned it a long time ago. I want to encourage you when you give to the Lord, don't be giving like if you don't know why you're giving. When you give to God, you give believing God that when I give to you, God, you got this thing set up for me and my family. You got this thing set up because if God can trust you, then God will bless you. The reason some people don't get increase is because they'll leave the church. The reason some people don't get increase is because they'll leave the church. The reason some people don't get increase is because they'll leave the church. So it, it, he twists the scriptures, he does that so that he can get the tithing, so he can get the offering, and so that he can keep it and for an extravagant amount of money. Um, the thing about it is when the sowing of the seed for your need began to be prevalent and all the time, just every single service, service would be over and for an hour to an hour and a half he would go off talking about the importance of sowing a seed for your need sowing and sowing and sowing and giving to the church and promising that those who were giving of their time who were the leaders and in ministry were going to one day be in a, a paid employee um, there was a prophecy that was given to him and to his wife Kia that within five years um, somebody was going to give him five hundred thousand dollars well that never happened that person's a false prophet and this was a well-known fact that Brian brought up quite a bit. But let me tell you something about the sowing seed for your need. I have before in one of my other parts of the series, but I'm going to give it to you again. It's in 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Now, really quick, um, they forget this next part on purpose. Uh, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth the cheerful giver. They always say, God loveth the cheerful giver. God loveth the cheerful giver. But the problem is, is that they forget not out of necessity. That means not out of your need. You're not supposed to give out of needing something. That was one thing that I saw people giving testimony that they need something paid or they need this. And God provided 
and then they gave it to the church. There was a woman that imagined being a single mom and she says that she took her children in the morning by bus, three children, to their school. Then she had to take a couple buses just to get to work. Then she had to take from work to go pick up the kids on the bus, all on the bus, okay? Then take the children either home or run an errand after, which is usually to the grocery store. Then take the bus all the way back home. That was so burdensome for her. So she prayed to the Lord. There was a vehicle and it was about seven or nine hundred dollars. I think it was about nine hundred dollars. And it was a friend of a friend was selling it. She was going to do this woman a favor by knowing that she had this hardship and everything. Um, give her this vehicle at this price. Well, she prayed and prayed, diligently sought the Lord to give her the $900. So she went up on stage with this praise report next to Brian holding the microphone that she was uh, given the $900. The Lord provided for her. And guess what she was going to do? So a seed. So she gave that money, all of it, to the church. Tell me if that makes any sense to you guys. Does it make sense biblically? Because I just gave you the scriptures that says no. It is not biblical. Not out of your need. And she just got robbed out of that money. Out of that money. So she leaving that charge on a bus. And, you know... There was another where my mom wanted to sow a seed. And Brian did a great deal of guilt tripping people um, that they're robbing from God, the tithing, um, that they don't have any offering to give, they should give and not go out to eat, don't go to Chili's, don't go to Applebee's, which... Most of the majority of the congregation at this time were not doing that. Maybe a handful of people, but the ones that were eating out extravagantly all the time were Brian and Kia and his family. And the reason I know this is because his mom was at the church for a time and she one day after service came, told me and my mom together, they were tired, she was tired of eating out. They order out all the time, every meal, or go out to dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And she was sick and tired of it. She wanted a home-cooked meal. So we knew when Brian's screaming all these things not to go to restaurants, he's the one that was going to restaurants after service. They teach, and I've mentioned this before in the spiritual birthing video of the series. Go back and watch it. That there is taught, and it was taught, that you're going to get birth spiritually. That Brian has something spiritually in him to release every service onto people. And this is a part of the Word of Faith Doctrine. It was created by Kenneth Copeland, billionaire preacher who made the money off the backs of people that are trusting him to bring the gospel and that are speaking the truth. But instead, they heap up teachers with itching ears. Let me go to the scriptures with that one real quick. 1 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, shall heap, shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. All of this stuff, they are heaping up. Who is the Bible talking about when the, the Bible says they? It's talking about the people that are listening to them, because they're paying and giving all this money to these false teachers. These false teachers would have nothing to stand on. And false prophets. If these people stopped listening to them. Buying their CDs. Going to their conventions. Their speaking events. Um, giving them money out of their need. They would have nothing. Absolutely nothing. And Brian is a great showman. He screams a lot. He stands on chairs. If, if, you're, if you're close to me. If you know me. If you don't. You're about to get to know me a little bit better. Um, Pastor Brian and I, we're, we're, we're pretty different, right? But opposites, you know, make a good team. So the way that we approach things is, is very different. Um, you're not going to see me jumping on chairs. If I do, I will probably fall and you will not be able to get me back up. That's a stepping stone to take you higher. And as I see the things of this earth grow slowly dim, we continue to go higher. 
Not the elevation of a man. But the elevation of the Spirit of God within the man or woman of God who has shown that to make God the glory of their life. I'm talking about Jesus living in you and Jesus doing what he wants to do with you. Yeah, this is very interesting because Rod Parsley does the same thing while they're yelling that, what, I bought these chairs? I could stand on them if I want to. He said, Rod Parsley said it, so he's going to say it too. I told you, he's a very big Rod Parsley wannabe. Now, over the years, he has changed his, his look is a little more um, like a dude. I mean, like a homeboy, if I can say it correctly. He, he's He kind of looks like Rod Parsley. Rod Parsley's starting to down... Uh, dress a lot these days. He's in these t-shirts and these jeans and he's got the goatee and the face hair just like Brian. Hmm. Well, anyway, um, I, and I don't, by the way, put a pass with Kia, um, as she is a co-pastor at Extreme Harvest Church, which it was Extreme Impact Church back in the day. He changed the name again to match Parsley's Church, which is um, World Harvest Church. So, of course, it's Extreme Harvest Church now. So, you know, what a shocker. Um, but Kia, she, the reason I say I don't give her a pass, because Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So, she lives with him. She knows him um, very, very well. And there was an instance she had a couple at church that she had known for years and he had uh, gone by the name of dad even though that wasn't her real dad and one day while she told me my brother and another girl that was standing there on the stage one day she was laughing that he came up to her and pulled out his um, wallet and said I forgot to give my tithes and offerings and he's pulling out a whole bunch of cash she said she didn't bother telling him that his wife had just done that and given it and handed it to Kia. And um, so Kia said, okay, and she took the money. Now, a woman of integrity would not be deceptive. She would have said, no, your, your wife already just gave me the tithes and offerings. You're okay. Instead, she laughed about it to us and she took the money. So I don't put a pass to her whatsoever. Can two walk together unless they agree? She agrees with everything that's going on. She sees the money. There's been so many instances where the armor bearers would hand her the money, um, you know, the little money things after tithes and offerings were, were collected and she would withdraw into the office. And Brian told the congregation, which was all of us, that she was in there praying well the keyboard was right on the edge of the stage at that time and i can and so was the uh, office right uh, right next to it like a little walkway was right there and the door was shut and i can literally hear her paying bills on you know to people and then after service it was just her and brian that was doing the money you know they didn't have any people doing it. They were the ones that were in charge of the money. According to 501c3, you're supposed to have other leadership counting and being accountable for the money because they don't want anything funny going on. That did not happen. Okay, Brian at that time was under another church's 501c3. I'm not sure if they were allowed to do that or not. And I don't know if he has his own to this day. I'm just telling you exactly what happened way back then. 2007 to 2009 and we're now going into i mean we're in 2024 so it's been quite a number of years now, there was this couple that went to the church they were leaders and they had a great deal of children and some of them were in leadership as well and there was the time where they had gotten together that evening with brian and kia at starbucks and we were told about this meeting that everything went well. We didn't know what it was about. It was kept secret from everybody else, just that they had a meeting with them and it went really, really well. Well, the following Sunday, which was the next day, because this was Saturday evening, um, Saturday morning, Brian, as he always does, is screaming on the microphone, yelling, and you don't want to miss this, and blah, 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 blah. He suddenly went on this rant 
Um, his voice was raised even louder. He started hollering that if you don't like how I do things, if you don't like how this church is run, um, you can just get out. And he was literally right in front of me because right then I was playing my bass guitar. So he's standing within some feet of me. And he was swinging his arm like this, pointing and pointing. And the direction he was pointing is exactly where that couple always sat in the back of the church. And I had a feeling something had gone on. Well, after service, Pia had turned and looked at me and said, pray, pray. And I looked and the couple had approached Brian and he was standing up at the pulpit with some people around him talking. We were all chatting after service, getting, you know, acquainted, fellowshipping with everybody. And I didn't know what it was about. Well, after um, that Sunday, the following Sunday, Brian told us that that couple had put into question about how he spent his money and it just didn't go well and a lot of things were said that was accusations and everything so um, to beware of them he told everybody called them out by name according to what the Bible says well the Bible also gives us an example uh, about hearing both sides of a story I, I can't think of it offhand but there is also the story of Solomon where he heard both women who had lost their children. He heard both of their sides and then he made the decision and found out who was the right mom in the story. Um, I'll pop that verse up so you guys can read it. But there is wisdom. You should hear both sides of the story before you make a decision. We were so ingrained back then not to question the pastor. Don't say anything about him. Don't put into question. He's right about everything or you would be sat out of ministry. And I also see a lot of people ostracized. If you didn't agree, the pastor would totally ignore you. And so would Kia. She would make faces and there was a huge amount of ignoring going on. If they didn't agree with you because you didn't agree with something that they said or did. And so Brian called out the, this couple. Well, later after we left the church, I found out the couple came to me, a couple came to me and to my, my mom and my brother and said that all they did, they had a really nice conversation. They had a conversation, I apologize about the noise, they're working out back here, um, that all they did was talk to Brian and Kia that there were people in the church and a lot of new believers too that were at the church that have come up to this couple. And I'm not going to mention their names because I don't think that they're going to want that public and everything but they had gone up to them and had asked they didn't understand what Brian was doing with all this money he was collecting for tithes offerings for the building also for the property etc but he's showing up in new vehicles and nice new suits and jewelry we all saw it but all of us as leaders were you know sealed lips sealed lips so they had told them that they had some concerns so we thought we'd let you know it was at that time that brian let them know that he was taking about i don't know how many grand a month on his salary we were told about 20 grand now i'm not sure if that's true because i didn't hear brian's side and quite honestly i don't want to i heard both of their sides of the story and i know who's telling the truth um specifically because i saw with my own eyes um but Brian does not like to be questioned about the money. I did see him um, squandering money. Um, he was always, always toting the nicest suits. His wife started with nice new outfits. They had jewelry. He, you know, a new watch. These are things that cannot be not seen. But they, the couple told me that Brian seemed very nice. He was amiable about it. And they, as leaders, just let them know that all these people were coming up to them with questions and they didn't know how to answer it. So then the following service, Brian went off on that tangent and it really confused them. And that's when they had walked up to him that Sunday morning after service and said, we're just going to leave the church. Um, if this is how you're going to behave, we're going to, we're going to go. And again, Brian knows the truth. Kia absolutely knows the truth. I do not put anything past her. She knows exactly the lies the deception that's going on, the mishandling of money. Um, that is another thing that the property never was, you know, paid for. 
Um, apparently, Brian at that time also was buying, I mean, uh, not buying, excuse me, he was building a house. Um, it was a nice new house, we were told, from several congregants. Again, these congregants were told after we left the church that we were evil, not to come around us because otherwise you're going to be sat out of ministry. There were people actually that were telling us what was going on and they refused to listen to what Brian said because they believed that we were men and women of God, that we were who we were genuine about Jesus and something must have happened that wasn't good. They just... We didn't tell them. For months, we kept our mouths quiet because that's what we were taught. Not to touch God's anointed. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a whole video on that too. About touch not God's anointed. Go back and watch it. I think it's part three. But we were taught that very well. Not to say anything. Not to question anything. Because eventually you're going to question and come into mind of the false teaching that went on. But my mom did a little digging. God bless her to this day because she called the owner of that property when we found out through the grapevine again that the property was not going to be bought. Um, because all these ministries, they all have some sort of, you got to pledge. Pledge money that you don't have because God is going to give it to you so you can give it to the church. That's what pledging really is according to Word of Faith people. Um, which makes absolutely no sense, guys. If you don't have money to pledge, don't pledge it. And they're penny pinching you anyway at these churches. Just get straight to their doctrine. You're going to find it's false. But anyway, my mom called and found out that she talked to the owner of the property who met with Brian face to face, gave him back, I believe, 15 grand or more um, of the church's money. And what he did with it, I question. Um, can't really throw accusations out. I wasn't there. I'm telling you exactly what happened. But um, Brian's house was built. So I'm guessing, you know. So yeah, so tithes and offerings, pledging, all of that is completely... The only thing that is uh, biblical is giving of an offering. You can give an offering cheerfully unto the Lord and... Get that out of your head about giving out of necessity you need something because it's around all of these word of faith circles. Give a seat out of your need. And I've looked and looked to see if there's any footage of Brian doing a seat of your need that's anything recent. But I did find, I couldn't find it. I did find a lot of false teaching, which I'm going to show you and share with you because I think it's very important. Everything you see by what he said, because what he saw is what he said. And this is the beauty of what you're going to get today. Because some of you are going to come out of that mess and you ain't never going back into it again. Because you're going to start speaking like your daddy. to touch anything. Are you with me? Follow the bouncing preacher. Okay. Adam didn't have to toil. He didn't have to touch anything other than Eve. I learned that in, in marriage conference. Like, he didn't have to touch anything. Other than Eve. I learned that in, in marriage conference. Like, he didn't have to touch anything other than Eve. I learned that in, in marriage conference. Like, so, guys, as you can see, these things are not biblical, the things that he's saying. Again, this is so much declaring, decreeing into the atmosphere and making things happen like we're sons and daughters of God, which we are sons and daughters of God, but because we're sons and daughters of God, we can do what God did. No, we can't. Uh, Word of Faith people are very famous for taking a scripture out of context, one verse, missing a lot more. 
or taking a verse or a story in the Bible and applying it to us, which is not applicable, applicable, you can't do that. But so many people are falling for this trap. And guys, that is the reason why I was sharing about Brian. Now he's a part of the Demon Slayers. Guys, these guys actually believe that Christians can be possessed. If you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Light and darkness cannot live in the same place. So guys, if you have fear that you have some sort of demon because you keep falling into lust or into alcohol or something, guys, the Bible says these are our own flesh, our own desires. You need to start submitting to the Lord and ask Him for repent of your sins and ask Him to forgive you for falling into these evil things and continue with your walk with the Lord because none of this is biblical. You know, a Christian cannot be possessed, but it keeps them coming like these guys are elite and they're above everybody. They hear from God. They have something that you don't have. They can cast demons out of Christians. Um, everywhere in the Bible that you read in the New Testament, those people that were had demons later, I mean, you don't read that they're saved at all. And scripture contradicts what they're saying, but this keeps the money coming in. This keeps, and you're like, well, no, you know, the church isn't giving that much money. Well, but they've got views on YouTube. Facebook is a big one for Brian Ayala. I saw he's got a big following on Facebook only. His other, like, Twitter and YouTube, it's not very high. So Facebook does monetize and give you money for your views and for how many followers that you have, how many plays that you get every single month and every week. They tally that all up and then they give you a check for that. So don't tell me that he's not getting any money. He is getting a good amount of money. He's got a lot of followers. As you can see, I'm posting some of that up there of the plays and the look and stuff. He's got a lot of people on the Facebook. So guys, I, I tell my story to tell you also. I, I'm not angry at Brian and Kia. I'm letting you know the deception that went on back then. And Brian is, like I said, he copycats Parsley. Um, services where I thought that Brian sought the Lord and got a really awesome service. I went up to one of the men after service and his uh, soon-to-be wife was like, wasn't that a wonderful service and um, the sermon? And he said, yeah, I heard it before. And I kind of furrowed my brow, brow. I was very puzzled. And he said, Rod Parsley did that same service like a couple weeks ago on, on, on TVN. And it was at that point I just went... This dude is stealing parsley sermons. I mean, he can't rightly divide the scriptures. He obviously is not temperate, guys. Um, I have also more videos. I have another video about the last conversation I had with him where his true colors came out. Quite evil. Um, not temperate as a pastor should be. So, guys, again, I tell you all this. I don't have a bone to pick with him. I hope he repents of his sins and starts reading God's word to wash away all of that false teaching that he is encumbering himself with um, from Greg Locke and Isaiah Saldivar, I think his name is, and all those guys that's coming up at that shift, the shift, the master something. Guys, be aware, be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Run from these false teachers because they're not looking after your souls. They're looking after their number one to get money, get notoriety, to um, be proud. They're very proud and arrogant. I mean, they're screaming over the microphone at people. Drag him out. Drag him out right now in Jesus' name. Drag both of them out in Jesus' name. Drag him out. Drag him out right now in Jesus' name. Drag both of them out in Jesus' name. My heart is just broken yeah, for right what's here. been going on. Anybody else want to play games before I get to preaching? Because it's going to be twice as bad here in a few minutes. You do it while I'm preaching. I'll take this microphone and bust you in the mouth with it in the name of God. This man right here is not living up to what a pastor needs to be. Oh, no, 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 I'm telling you right now. He is, he is not. Get out, get out of here now. Get out. Stop touching me. Stop touching me. 
they can't control themselves at all. If they're like this out in the open, I wonder how they are in private behind closed doors. I doubt it's any better. In fact, I almost assume it's worse, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. But I have run across Brian outside of church and questioning him about his teachings. Well, let me tell you, he's got nothing to say because he has no scriptures to back up anything that he taught. And at the risk of being called divisive, those that care about the church have a duty. You have to speak out. If you love the Lord and you love the body of Christ, it's our duty to speak out where there is a false presentation of Jesus Christ and his atonement. Real love will speak to the teaching while praying for the people that teach it. So you're not attacking anyone. What are you doing? You're trying to find truth. The Bible says we have to rightly divide. And some truth has been presented to us. We didn't even test it. We just assumed it was God, right? So we don't judge the hearts of men. Before I get into this, we don't judge the hearts of men, but we're judging doctrine. Why? Because your life depends on it. But um, stop defending. What are you afraid of? Before we go on, what are you afraid of? Uh, uh, looking at the other side of this mountain, what are you afraid of? Many attempt to explain the problems presented by the word faith movement, but the foundational doctrines have not been examined on any of these studies. This book is designed to introduce the reader to a thorough examination of basically the teaching of E.W. Kenyon. Now, E.W. Kenyon is considered the, f the grandfather of this message. And if you don't understand the roots of the movement, where he studied, who he studied under, and has, it has changed, and I'm not saying everybody preaches the way he does, but there's a lot of doctrines that he brought in from these other uh, metaphysics and these different cults and these different things, and he mixed it with Christianity. Now there's such a mixture, it's very confusing. I have read this book five times in this last week. And there's times I had to sit down, it was just like my head got confused. Because it's, some of the things are so close. Do you know what I'm saying? There's such a closeness in the things that I've been taught. I'm like, okay, now what's, what is the truth? Like someone I was meeting with for breakfast the other day, they were talking about dominionism. And I said, that is the kingdom now teaching. We believe the kingdom is coming. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. Well, they're teaching that you go and infiltrate every part and you dominate it and the, the, Jesus is going to come back. The bride has to do it. And where did this teaching come? Well, it came from an extra biblical revelation from a so-called prophet that said Jesus appeared to him and said, there's nothing else I can do. If you don't do it, I can't do it. In the name of Jesus, you rebuke that demon. If you didn't rebuke that demon, I could. So what it do? It gives all the power to the believer. You have to remember, it's still his power. We're using his name. He's told us to go lay hands in his name. It's not our power. It's his power. Just because he's given us his power doesn't mean he doesn't have any more. <laughs> he's still God and we are not. Thank God he lets us work with him, but he is still boss. Well, in this teaching, it makes you equal with him. So guys, um, this is another part of the why I left the Word of Faith Church and it was underneath... Brian Ayala, and he has changed his name from Extreme Impact to Extreme Harvest Church, and I ask you to run from him, uh, from, I also saw he put, bam, Brian Ayala Ministries, y'all run from anything that that man and his wife have to say, it is doctrines of demons, it is evil, it is not according to God's word. I almost suspect he's going to come back if he ever sees this video trying to smite and smear my name or my family's name or say that um, he's being attacked because that's what a lot of them do is say, I'm being attacked and poor me. It's not what it's, what's going on. We're exposing them in the false teachings in hopes that people will come and awaken out of this uh, false doctrine and come to the realization of God's truth of his word and get out of these churches. Guys, I love and bless you. Take care. Like and subscribe. Comment below and I will see you next time. God bless. Boo!